This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1545, Seven Mantras for Letting Go of How Life Should Be, by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, the guy who's been reading articles, book excerpts, even student essays to you every day, including holidays, for over four years, covering personal development or self-help, how to live a better life, and a lot more. It's always with permission from the authors or websites. Just hit the subscribe or follow button in your podcast app to get new episodes for free. Today's post being from Mark and Angel. So let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Seven Mantras for Letting Go of How Life Should Be by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. When life has to be a certain way in order to be good enough for us, we close ourselves off from all the real and present opportunities available. On the contrary, when we let go of the way it should be, we free our minds to deal with life's unexpected changes, challenges, and chaos in the most effective way possible. We create space for acceptance, learning, and growth. We learn from our mistakes and the mistakes of others. We see the world through an unbiased set of eyes. And gradually, we allow ourselves to step forward with a clear and focused mind. With that said, I don't always let go when I need to. I don't always have a clear and focused mind because I'm only human and human beings have the tendency to hold on too tight. Sometimes life slaps us really hard and we attach ourselves to the pain, even when we know better. When I'm holding on too tight, I can really feel it in my gut. I feel anxious, frustrated, irritated, and upset. There's an aching for things to be different than they are, a feeling of rejection and betrayal and hopelessness. I'm sure you can relate. We're all struggling through this one together in our own unique way. And the vast majority of our torment is a result of being caught up in whatever story we're telling ourselves about how life should be. So for starters, here's what I try to keep in mind. Mantras for letting go of how it should be. Number one, life is change. You must accept the fact that things may never go back to how they used to be and that this ending is really a new beginning. Number two, Even though you cannot control everything that happens, you can control your attitude about what happens. And in doing so, you will gradually master change rather than allowing it to gradually master you. Angel and I discussed this further in the adversity chapter of 1,000 Little Things Happy Successful People Do Differently. Number three, every difficult life situation can be an excuse for hopelessness or an opportunity for growth, depending on what you choose to do with it. Number four, daily effort is never wasted even when it leads to discouraging results, for it always makes you stronger, more experienced, and more educated in the long run. Number five, if you wanna be effective and bright, let go of your need to always be right. Number six, when you hear only what you want to hear, you're not really listening. Listen to what you don't want to hear too. That's how you grow. Read, loving what is. Number seven, be humble, be teachable. The world is bigger than your view of the world. There's always room for a new perspective, a new step, a new possibility, a new beginning. First steps for coping with unfavorable outcomes. Reflecting on the mantras can be incredibly grounding when life doesn't go as planned. But what can you do if the immediate tension inside you is spiraling out of control? Here's a brief outline of some initial steps Angel and I actively take and cover with our core students and live event attendees to cope with the immediate tension that arises from unfavorable outcomes in our lives. Number one, acknowledge the tension inside you. If you notice yourself getting angry and flustered, it's a sign that you need to pause, take a deep breath, and practice the remaining steps. Number two, resist the urge to act in haste. The greatest harm comes whenever you act out of anger. Actions that might include giving up too soon, consuming unhealthy substances, or even attacking someone else. So whenever you notice anger building up inside you, try not to take any form of destructive action. Instead, turn inward and mindfully assess whatever it is that's arising. Number three, sit with your feelings and give them space. Turn directly towards the tension you feel and just be a witness. See it as something that's passing through you but is not you. It's a feeling, a dark cloud passing across a vast sky, not a permanent fixture. Treat it that way. Instead of obsessing yourself with the dark cloud's presence, Try to broaden your perspective. Give it the space it needs to pass. Sometimes you need a little distance to see things clearly again. And number four, be okay with not knowing. Now that you've given yourself some necessary space, tell yourself, I don't know why things are this way and be okay with this unknowing. 
Give yourself full permission to not have concrete answers in this moment. What would it be like to allow this moment to unfold without knowing? What is it like to not know what's going on in the hearts and minds of others? What is it like to not know how to respond to life's chaos? What is it like to be here right now without jumping to conclusions? The bottom line is that when life dishes you a harsh dose of reality, the best first steps involve sitting silently and witnessing the thoughts passing through you. Just witnessing at first, not interfering and not even judging because by judging too rapidly, you have lost a pure witness. The moment you rush to say, this is absolutely terrible or things should be different, you've already jumped head first into the chaotic tension. It takes practice to create a gap between the witnessing of thoughts and your response to them. Once the gap is there, however, you are in for a great surprise. It becomes evident that you are not the thoughts themselves, nor the tension and chaos influencing them. You are the witness, a watcher, who's capable of changing your mind and rising above the turmoil. Angel and I work through this with our students in the self-paced Getting Back to Happy course and at the annual Think Better, Live Better conference. You just listened to the post titled Seven Mantras for Letting Go of How Life Should Be by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. And now your dog's health is as important as every other member of your family and it starts with what you feed them. But do you know what is in your dog's food? Ollie puts dogs first with vet formulated recipes and fully transparent ingredients to give your dog the healthiest food possible. Ollie makes fresh meals for dogs with real ingredients that people can eat and delivers them to you on a regular schedule. They beat out store-bought dog food at a 10 to one on the palatability scale because they created customized vet formulated recipes made with all natural ingredients, no preservatives, and sourced from US family farms. Go to myollie.com answer a few questions about your dog, and they'll customize recipes to your dog and ship pre-portioned meals so your pup gets the perfect portion every time. They've delivered 5 million meals and counting. Shipping is free, and if your dog doesn't like the meals, they have a money-back guarantee. Ollie's offering our listeners 60% off your first box plus a free bag of treats at myollie.com slash try slash old. This is the best deal they have available anywhere. Go to myollie.com slash try slash OLD for 60% off plus a free bag of treats. Spelled myollie.com slash try slash old. And I have that linked in this episode's description. Thank you to Mark. We've had a few recurring themes lately. This one reminded me of the post from about two days ago about letting go of expectations. One of those tips that I thought was great and I mentioned it at the end was that you are not your thoughts or something along those lines. And we're seeing it here again, it's so true. If you've ever done any formal or even somewhat formal meditation, this should be pretty familiar to you, the idea that you can see your thoughts and not react to them immediately. That's pretty much what the whole practice of meditation is and why I like it. You simply catch a thought, don't judge it, just catch it, observe it, and then let it go and focus on your breath again. After another second or two, another thought will pop up. Again, you catch it, observe it, and let it go. No judging. And after doing that thousands of times, which is what tends to happen since our minds move so fast, that'll help you disconnect from thought and from knee-jerk reactions, which is a great skill to have. So definitely worth trying out. But that'll do it for today. Thank you for listening and being here and for subscribing to the show. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.